and this is going to be our username field and this one's going to be alright well actually we already went ahead and repurposed all of our different fields here so this is actually pretty awesome now just a few more things alright this text area and this text area this one is not going to be editable but you want line wrap enabled that's so that if someone's typing a long message that goes in here you don't want for people to have to scroll over to the side you want it to automatically go ahead and wrap around all right and our next one over here too we also want for this one not to be editable so you just untick that and the only other thing I want to mention too we don't want line wrap on that one um, just because people's username shouldn't be that long um, you know you can talk to whoever you have on your server and just let them know hey you know if you have a really long username people are gonna have to scroll over and see your complete name um, but that's basically how you create your your GUI for this is not extremely complicated uh, it's not extremely hard so once we go ahead and get going here I'm just gonna take us back up to our chat main this is how like I said this one looks and this is how I got to this point um, per just showing you down here and if you notice if we go ahead and run our main project here we're gonna have our nice looking GUI here that we actually created so like I said we're gonna be pretty much good to go now at this point I'm gonna go ahead and dive into the code for you because that's what go that's what makes everything work so for this project we're actually gonna have to import java.net that's gonna enable us to go ahead and do transmission over a network We need java.io uh, we need that because we're gonna have a buffered reader and and a print writer and all that so we need the IO and we also need java.util and that's because we have a we have an array list that we're gonna be using as well and that array list um, is just going to hold all of our online users and it's going to be regenerated per every time that the uh, server updates us so uh, it's not going to be too too bad uh, so let's go ahead here and we're going to dive right into this um, if we look at our code here we start off with our public class um, and then we have our variables here which are at the very top so we're going to have a string that's called username all right, and that's going to be the person's username. We're going to have a socket that we create. Of course, the socket is going to be the socket that goes out to the server. We're going to have a buffered reader, which is going to read the data that comes from the server. We're going to have a print writer, which is going to print data over the network back over to the server. We're going to have our array list, which is going to hold all of our usernames. So as you can see here, we have an array list, and it's going to hold strings. That's all it's going to hold. I'm going to have a boolean variable that's called is connected and this is just a really quick variable that I created which is just going to specify um, whether the client is currently connected or not now you're going to have your public uh, you're going to have your method here this is the main one it's going to go ahead and initiate all your components here or initialize all your components and that's just going to be there now here's where we go ahead and start to make some changes uh, you're gonna notice that we have our public class this is our incoming reader uh, but for the main part I'm just gonna go ahead just to show you quickly how things work we have our code that executes when we do our connect button if you go back to your design view here you're gonna notice that of course we have our buttons if you double click on your buttons then it brings up an area where you're able to put in your programming for each button so if we double click on our connect button then it takes us here to our action listener event that's going to happen and then it shows us what code is going to execute alright and of course you're going to have to type all of this in but once again like I said I'm going to also give you a text file that you're going to be able to look at just in case there's anything you miss so the first thing we start off with is a conditional if statement and it's saying if is connected equals false remember we had our boolean variable at the very top and it starts off as false because of course we're not going to start off connected if it is false then it's going to go ahead and run the text within the if this first if condition here and basically what it's stating is it's going to take the username from the username field alright so it's going to get the text from this field 
So we're going to do username equals username field dot get text. All right, so it's going to change that variable string to whatever's in the username field. And then it's going to make the username field not editable anymore. So it's going to set editable equals false. So I'm pretty much set it up so that after it takes the username out of that variable, then it's going to go ahead and set it to not be editable anymore. You don't want a person who's going to be able to change their username in the middle of a chat and think that it's going to automatically update. All right. So that area is then going to become gray once the person connects because they're not going to be able to edit it anymore. And then we're going to go ahead and do some risky stuff here. We're going to go ahead and try to establish a socket connection with the server. Now, here is actually where you determine where the IP address of the server is, all right? Because it can actually be different things, of course. Uh, in this case, I made it 127.0.0.1. For those of you who are familiar with TCP IP, you will know that 127.0.0.1 is a loopback connection. So normally, 127.0.0.1 is going to loop back to whatever computer you're on so if you're running the server on the computer just to test it out then you can leave this as is but of course if you're running it on a different computer you're gonna need to plug in the um, either the public IP address of that computer or you're gonna need to well the LAN IP address or if you're trying it over the WAN then you're gonna need the WAN IP address uh, or you can also in here put down a domain name and it'll resolve to whatever the domain name IP address is and then we have our port number which once again you can change this but you're just gonna have to change it on both ends of the code on the server and the client and next we have our input stream reader which once we establish this size